It is Advanced Mark Freak, and uh, as promised, I'm making the sprite tutorial that I said. I know I did the wild battle thing in between, but uh, you know now I'm going to do this. I was thinking I want to do like a three video stage process because it's quite lengthy, but by the end you guys should know how to scratch sprite, which is making them from start. And obviously I'm going to be saying terms and stuff that you might not understand. It's just sprite and bob, so just you'll understand it on the way. So wherever you get your sprites from, you know, make sure that bit bitmap files. This is kind of basic stuff because then it saves the pixels as pixels and it doesn't fade them out like in JPEG and that way you actually get really good like kind of quality stuff. So yeah, then what you do is to put them both on paint, you go on edit, paste from, find the file that you're doing and you just click it and select it and it should come in. So I might as well just give an example, paste from whatever, Alakazam. And when Alakazam comes in, he'll probably be like this. And if you have somebody behind him, then there'll be the white square. All you do is you just simply press this button and it'll go. But then you'll notice any other white parts of the um, sprite, so such as Alakazam's spoon and his eyes, that'll be all disappear as well. All you need to do is just move him back onto the white background and it should just change back. And obviously when you're changing him, it won't make much of a difference anyway. So we'll just get rid of him for now. Right now we're working on Cranidos and Solrock. And obviously the first stage is defining which colours you'll need and which colours are which because it's very important because you pretty much need this for every part. So we use the eyedropper tool and I just like to use big paintbrush and we have to define which colour which colour is the brightest on both of them. So obviously first here we have the white which you can't really see. Secondly we have this blue. Let me just make this a bit smaller. Then we have this blue here and this blue and this blue and I'll just explain where you usually get them from the first one this brightest one is usually called a highlight because it's the lightest part of the sprite and the second bit is actually the um, main color yeah you don't really see it much because quite most of the sprites are dark and this third bit is a shadow and obviously the uh, fourth bit is a darker shadow and this fifth bit which I've yeah, this um, this fifth bit is like um, a selective outlining, which I'll go through in more detail later. And the last colour is usually just a black, so I don't like adding it, sometimes I don't, sometimes I do, but you know, you add it if you want to, it's not really that important. Now, you should be able to find, four, don't forget there was one highlight there, should be able to find four, well five colours here, so there's one, there's one, that's the next one, here's one. And where's the outline? Yeah, that fifth, that last colour is usually a part of the outline where it's quite bright or whatnot, you know, wherever you find it. And then there's the black as well. I might as well just do it now that I've clicked on it there. So that's one part of it. Um, the other part, I might as well just go through because, um, you know, there's some sprites that won't actually. Um, their colours won't actually match, so there might not be the same amount of colours because of primary and secondary things like that. Actually, I think this one might work. I'm not sure. I can't remember doing this one, actually. Uh, let's just see. But if that does happen, if you do happen to have two sprites that don't really um, colour code, then you're just going to have to use kind of common sense and just kind of work out, you know, which colours would be best to use for what and just experiment, really. So, yep, I think that's about everything. Well, we'll find out anyway later. We'll find out later anyway. So now, now that we've defined the colors, the highlights, the base colors, the shadows, and the selective outlines, now, this, 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 is a, this is a really simple one, but um, trust me, it'll get a bit more difficult in the later videos. And then we do this paint. If you're using paint, then that's good. If you're using a different program, then there should be some change color function somewhere there, but I just like sticking to paint. So what you do is you click on the eyedropper, the rubber eyedropper, or, yeah, just make sure it goes to rubber because it just makes it easier. And what you do is, now I've not got that thing, I forgot to say it or whatever, where it shows whether you're right clicking or left clicking, so you're going to have to listen carefully. You right click on the colour that you want to change the sprite into. Let me just quickly make another one of these so I can show you what I'm on about. Copy, paste, you came over, yeah, sorted, yeah, so... You right click on the what on the colour you want to paint him in, if you want to think about it like that. So now I've picked this colour and your rubber should go red. 
yeah? That's good. Oh, well, I say red, but the color that you picked. Then you left click on the color that you want to change. So now I'm going to click it and it's, it won't change, but you should see in this bottom corner here that, you know, this background color is, this background color is the color that you want to change it to, and this one is. And what will happen is, when we right click, all of this same color here will be changed into it. So if I click over that, there you go, it gets changed. But don't forget, if you are using a white, and don't forget everything else will get changed as well around it. So if you are using a white, just make sure you get the actual right bits. But for every other color, it should be really simple. So let me just quickly do this. You can always rub around him later just to make sure. Just quickly color him in. Just go over him with the biggest rubber size. And you just do this for every single one. Now, another thing I'd like to say, just don't judge the sprite you're doing until you've finished him. Because, obviously, you're probably looking right now and you're thinking, what is going on right now with this guy? But um, you can't judge him until you finish because, really, you, you, you have no idea. Like, there's so many times, personally, myself, where I'm thinking the same thing and then, in the end, I think, well, it actually doesn't look that bad. So, you just keep, you just you know, right-click the color you want to change, left, no, right-click the color you want to paint it in, left-click the color you want to change, then right, yeah, then you right click over the actual image. So that way it will only paint the color that you need. So there we go. That's his top half finished. Now right click, right, left, right. So right, left, and now I'm doing right right now. So coloring him in again. Right, left, right. And it's as simple as that really. And you just continue doing that. This lesson was mainly about defining which colors are which, because it's a very important skill that you'll need later on, especially when you're doing things like splicing and revamping and things like that. That's what. That's another thing that I'll probably be going through later on as well. So, if you found all the colors and you've done all the colors properly and correctly, then you should end up with something that looks relatively professional. But obviously, as you've seen here. Uh, well, let's just say I've done this on purpose, that sometimes you might have missed out a color. Yeah, so for example, here I've missed out this gray. And because I missed out this gray, it doesn't look really that good. So all you simply have to do is just click on this gray and just with the paintbrush tool, just see where it would go. So obviously, so look, this is how I think it looks. Okay, it's darker than that. It's darker than that. But it's brighter than that, I think, personally. So I'd put it here in the middle because I've missed it out. Then... Then what you could do is either use one of these two colors again. So I could just use this color and just go over it like so. I could just go over it like this. But obviously, as you can see, I've not really picked the right color. So I could just pick this color instead. Use this color. So there you go so that's all right obviously i need to rub off all the bits around and obviously there's a, a lot of common sense in making this kind of stuff so obviously you have to see that obviously going over the white of the horns and the um the feet and the claws that wasn't the best idea so you just simply just with the paintbrush or um with the paint bucket or something just quickly go over them in white again just to make it look that professional again simply like that and then that's sorted. Or obviously, if you're using a different program, just use the change color thing and individually select the parts that you want. Now, I can't be asked to go around the whole thing and remove it, but I'm pretty sure you get the idea. Yeah, so that's recoloring. Make sure you know which color is which. So highlight, base color, shadow, you know, uh, second shadow and selective outlining. And then the normal outline, which is just usually black anyway. And then you can recolor and don't be afraid to try different recolors because, you know, you can make really, you know, stunning pieces. Although, make sure you stick to one color scheme because if you try, you know, showing off your inventions and their different color schemes, then you'll get criticized heavily as well. So I'm just going to go through some, if you've not seen them already, is walking over here. Walking, a bit of a pun. So as you can see here, I've obviously taken the colors here. I've used three color schemes here because I counted the nose of the color scheme as well. And... Um, I've made uh, war total slackings and backwards as well. 
and let's see what else have I done. There's uh, Steel Bee, and for this one, yeah, I used a bit of, I uh, zazzed this one up a bit. Uh, as you can see, obviously, the whole white thing issue again, but I zazzed this one up a bit because before, even these side bits weren't blue, they were green. But what I did is just naturally, just um, uh, by just by paintbrush or pencil, I just went over the right colours and it just adds a really nice effect to Steelix. So, you know, don't be afraid to try new colours and new things. Just any more examples have I got? I'm sure I've got, yeah, Grand Kazam. He's not a bad one as well. So just, if you see two that have about the same amount of colour schemes, obviously you can see by the palette here, that's what this is called, the palette. I've made quite a few mistakes, so bear with me, you know. So that's about it, you know.